If you have your Bibles with you, I would encourage you to flip to the chapter of Luke in the New Testament. We will be in um, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19, and this will be the Common English Bible Translation. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, 10 men with skin diseases approached him. Keeping their distance from him, they raised their voices and said, Jesus, Master, show us mercy. When Jesus saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. As they left, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he had been healed, returned and praised God with a loud voice. He fell on his face at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus replied, weren't 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? No one returned to praise God except this foreigner. Then Jesus said to him, get up and go. Your faith has healed you. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. I want you to think about, was there something that you really wanted as a child, but you didn't get? A pony, a treehouse, a, a pool. There, there were a couple of things for me. My, my friend Ricky Nolan, I would go and visit him, and he had this little motorcycle, this little dirt bike, and I'd go over to his house, and he'd be driving and I'd be on the back of that and we'd ride all over the place and the thing would seem tiny tiny to me now it's probably like a 50 cc kind of motorcycle a little tiny engine probably the top speed was 20 miles an hour or so but he lived out in the woods and and us riding around on that way oh so many good times and I come home I said mom dad I want a dirt bike oh can you can we get one and no no we can't get you one now and the answer was always when you're 12 that's when we could get one well I was seven or eight years old then 12 seemed like an eternity away the other thing was a bb gun i'd go to friends houses and they all had bb guns and we'd shoot up cans or whatever it was with it and fun times and come home mom dad i want a bb gun w would you give me a bb gun now we weren't a gun household at all we didn't have guns around and the thing was i ruined my chances though i they asked what I would do with it. And I said, I would shoot my older sister with it. Well, I can't blame them for not giving me one. I, I didn't get one. And the answer again was, well, when you're 12, you can have one then. By the time I was 12, I was into other things. I didn't want mini bikes and BB guns and things like that. But there was also, there was a difference between what I wanted and what I needed. I wanted motorcycles and BB guns, but what I probably needed was good shoes, clothing, healthy, loving home, maybe a soccer ball, some toys, or some books. And the way I was that motorcycles and BB guns were a hazard to my health and others, but those were the things that I wanted. There was a difference between what I wanted and what I needed. I think that that's true here in the story. I had a friend that pointed out something that I had missed in the years and years that I have read the story. And you've probably heard this story many times. It's kind of the go-to one for Thanksgiving. Ten men with leprosy call out to Jesus. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Jesus sends them to the priest, and on the way, they're healed. But one of them, who happened to be a Samaritan, an outsider, was the one who went back to say thank you. Now, this is, you can't go wrong with this story on Thanksgiving, can you? I mean, and there's a whole lot to be said about thankfulness right here. This one is, is he has, he's able to see that what Jesus has done for him, he turns back and wants to express his thanks. I mean, this is a slam dunk for Thanksgiving. But I missed something in this story that a friend pointed out to me. My friend pointed out that these lepers, as they call out to Jesus, they're not asking for healing. What they're asking for is money uh, for alms. And we've seen this a thousand times, haven't we? Maybe you go to downtown Indianapolis, there's a person on a street corner sitting in a wheelchair, maybe doesn't even have, maybe legs have been amputated and with a can for change asking for money. I mean, we've seen this again and again. Well, that's what's happening here in the story as Jesus goes by and they call out what they're asking for is alms. Throw some coins 
our way, Jesus, is what they're asking. They weren't necessarily asking for healing, but what they're asking for is money. Now, that changes the story a little bit when you begin to think about it, doesn't, doesn't it? And it makes me think about what are we asking for in our own lives? What is it that we want for ourselves? And maybe even deeper than BB guns and motorcycles, what do you wish for in your heart of hearts for yourself? And I mean even more than, I mean, we all have these, these pipe dream wishes to win the lottery or, or whatever that is. We all have those wish lists, but, but what do you want for yourself? Enough money to pay the bills? Love? An honest friend? A trip to someplace warm in the winter? What's the thing that you, you say to yourself, if I just had this? then I would be all right. Health for your body, a boost in your checking account, a house in a better neighborhood, a, a friend who truly understood you. I, I, find my, I found myself with these wishes through the years. I, I told myself, if I just had this one thing, then I would be okay. Uh, a quicker mind, a bigger bank account, I was only 15 pounds lighter. If I had this thing, I tell myself, I, I, then I would be okay. Then, then I would be all right. I read a book about relationships, and there was a man who, who talked about, the, the author of it, he talked about how he had learned to value relationships in his life. And earlier in his life, his hope and his wish was that he hoped to get to the place where he could finally afford to, uh, to shop for clothes at Brooks Brothers. Now, if you've ever been in a Brooks Brothers store, you know that they're nice clothes, high-end, preppy-looking kind of clothes, but they're, they're expensive. If you've ever wandered in one of those stores, you, if you're like me, you say, mm, I, I don't know if I can afford to shop here. But he thought to himself, he thought, that's what I would want for myself. If I can finally get to the place where I can shop there, then I know that I will have arrived in life. I'll have what I, I want. And when I can buy what I want there, then, then I'll be okay. Well, he finally got to the place where he could. Well, he was making enough money that he went and he bought himself a Brooks Brothers shirt. Put down $100 or whatever it was for the shirt. Bought the shirt. First day wearing the shirt. Thought he had arrived finally. He was feeling like he was, he was on cloud nine. Finally, he, had, he was wearing his Brooks Brothers shirt. He washed it. And he went to put it on the next time. And he noticed that, that a button had fallen off the shirt. And he realized that he had gotten what he wanted, but he realized what he wanted was deteriorating. It wasn't lasting. It wasn't, there wasn't lasting value. And, and he, re he realized maybe it wasn't what he needed. And he learned then to, to begin to value relationships more than things. But what about you? What do you want? And is it what you need? These lepers here, I mean, here comes Jesus. And they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Throw some money our way. With your coins, we can buy food for the coming day. Have, have mercy on us, Jesus. Now, does Jesus give them what they ask for? Well, no. He sends them off to the priest. Now, the priest would have had the job of, of inspecting someone in that culture with leprosy to say, okay, you, you're sick or you're healthy. That would have been had the job of sort of a health inspector. The priest would have given them the okay to return to normal society. As lepers, they had to live outside the city. They had to live separated from society. The priest would have said, okay, it's, it's okay for you to come back. And you know the story. As Jesus has sent them on the way, they are healed. But one saw, one noticed one had the eyes to see what had happened. Now, they all saw, and certainly they all noticed that they had been healed. But the Samaritan, this outsider, was the one that realized he had been given more than what he had asked for, but he had been given what he needed. And what they needed was health and vitality and community and life. And Jesus gives it to them. And more than just a few measly cents or dollars, more than... 10 bucks in their, their plate, he, he gives them what they needed. So this one turns around to say thank you. Well, what about you? What do you need? 
when your, your life is laid bare, what, what is it you truly need? We come to this time here in our country where we are celebrating Thanksgiving. And it seems like such a strange time to celebrate a holiday called Thanksgiving, isn't it? Because um, in typical times, right now, a lot of us would be traveling. Um, the church would be full on a day like today. There would be a lot of gatherings. But, but we've had to let go of so many of those things, haven't we? A lot of our gatherings are canceled. Uh, a lot of us are living with unsure lives. And we've had to think about in this time, not just what we want, because we've had to let go of so many things we want, but we've had to think about what do we truly need. Not just what do we want in perfect times, but we've had to think about what do we truly need. Often, our wants are at, not at odds with our needs. Or often we don't know what we need, or we seek the wrong thing. Oftentimes we're like these lepers, we're asking for a few coins. But Jesus offers healing. He offers life. Too often we're looking for what we want and not necessarily what we need. And we learn here that Jesus is not interested in just throwing a few measly bucks at a problem. But he brings healing, community, and life. In him we find not just what we think we want, but what we need. And this one, this one person who had had leprosy understands this. This one Samaritan understands it. They all knew that they had been healed, but this one, his eyes were open to the point where he saw, he understood that Jesus had given him truly what he needed, and he had given him healing, but not only he healing, but he'd given him his life back. He was able to return back to his community, to his family, to his friends. He had, had uh, the love of community back. He'd been restored to his community, and so he turned around. He went back to Jesus, praising God, because he got not what he asked for, but what he needed. That's all of us too, isn't it? I mean, think about it. Why are you tuning in to a church worship service on your computer or your phone? I mean, something a year ago that you never would have guessed that you'd be doing right now, but you're doing it. Uh, the, the bar has been raised higher if you want to go to church in a way, because you got to you gotta get out your computer. But yet you're here. You're listening. You're a part of this. You're worshiping together. And, and you do that, I think, because you know in your heart that Christ gives us what we need. We all don't get what we want all of the time, do we? Not every prayer is answered in the ways we want. Not every wish is granted. If we all got what we wanted, we'd all be richer and healthier and better looking and all of that. But we don't get what we want, do we? But that's okay. Because sometimes what we want really isn't what we need. Sometimes we're spiritually wishing for BB guns and dirt bikes when something so much more is offered. What is offered in Jesus is life, community, hope, justice, joy. We find in Jesus, we find life. And life is, in the, in the biblical sense, is so much more than just a heart beating. Life means that we are connected to God's beloved covenant community. And that's all of us. We're all drawn together in God's beloved community. We find in Jesus hope, hope that even though the night may be dark, and these last few months have been dark, I know that, but yet we know, we, we believe and hope that joy comes in the morning. And justice, that God ultimately in God's ultimate future will make things right. And, and that causes us to say we will work for justice and for things to be right, even now when we don't live in its fullness. And joy, we are offered joy, joy in our hearts that is not affected in the moment, but yet we live with joy in our hearts, knowing who God is, that God loves us and what God is doing. And all of that comes in God's kingdom. And that's what we need, isn't it? And Jesus comes bringing it. That's what we need. In our heart of hearts, what Jesus offers us is what we need. And we've received it. We continue to receive it. So all of us, in a way, are like those lepers on the way to see the priest. We know we've been healed. We might not have been given what we wanted, but we know we've been given what we need. We know we have received the only proper response then is to turn around 
and say thanks. Amen.